up guys, it's Mike here, and today I wanted to talk about my convict cichlids mating and fry. So as you guys know, I have convict cichlids and I have been trying to breed them for a while now. And right now, looking at the temperature, it is 96 degrees outside right now, and it's going to be 109. It, my friend who lives in Maine, his temperature is like 50 outside right now. So California and Maine are two very different places. But all of that out of the way, let's focus in on the cichlid. So, as I've mentioned earlier, this uh, female convict cichlid, she's been hiding out in this cave for quite a while now. And I thought that she died almost for because she wouldn't come out for two days straight. And apparently, they have fry now. So this is super awesome, guys. Here, let me just bring the camera closer and you guys could see. If, if you look very closely to it, you can see that there's like about like a lot of them, like about 50 for sure. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure what to do with them now. Uh, parents are taking good care of them, so I will not bother them. But um, if anything does start to happen, I will just like grab them out and uh, put them in a different tank. The 12 gallons getting ready for the cichlids. I was thinking about putting a mating pair into there. Maybe the jewels, if the jewels start mating. This jewel cichlid is really red and beautiful now, but so I believe it is a male because the males gain the red color first, but the other two don't. And like I've said before, this one does not have a spot on the side in the middle of its body. And the other jewel cichlids like this one right here have a spot right there in the middle of their body. But this is just so awesome. And I was um, talking with my friend yesterday through Facebook Messenger, uh, like live talking to him, FaceTiming him. And I just basically, I'm like, wow, look, my female convict cichlid finally came out of the cave. And I just look closely and there's a whole bunch of fry. Like just a ton. And it was awesome because last night I didn't film it though, but I will film it. They bring them inside of the little cave thingy at night. And during the day, the little fry are foraging out here. So I'm a bad fish keeper. I did not notice that they had fry for about like uh, a whole week now. Because the fry, after they hatch, it's about two to three days before they get big enough to actually swim around like that. And here on the glass, um, I have some kind of like little microscopic worms or something like um, detrius worms I don't know you can see them right here if I focus the camera on my finger here or hand you could see it um, yeah and hopefully the fry will feed off of them I what I did do was take this little plastic cup and a whole bunch of fish flakes ground them up with my fingers really small throw in some water and then take this uh, turkey suction cup thingy it's clean, it's new, I never used it for anything other than like aquarium stuff. And then just like suck it up and then drop it in the water about this low and inject it out. And it just drops a ton of food in that area for the fry and the parents to eat. Um, it's really helpful. The parents don't really eat it much because they're used to the tetra cichlid uh, sticks, but they haven't had the flakes for a while now because I got rid of the guppies, they were killing off the guppies, so that's why I got rid of them. But this is just, it's just super cool, like, I have honestly been a bad fish keeper for not noticing this earlier, but I couldn't tell, I even shined a flashlight inside of the cave a couple of times, not too much though, because I did not want to disturb the female, but I didn't know that she was capable of laying eggs, because the female is like, nearly twice as small as the male, but, I mean, technically guppies can do it too, and the eggs, eggs must have been super small, because these fry are almost a week old, and they are way smaller than guppy fry would be when they are born. But this is just really cool. So here, yeah, apparently out of the six cichlids that I had, convicts, one of them was really small. He never actually grew up, so he was like a little dwarf mutated one. And then these three are males. So basically I have four fe males and one female. And luckily for me, that one female that I had successfully bred. And it's amazing because when I ended up uh, getting these cichlids, they were maybe just a little bit bigger than that fry is right now. And onto the 12 gallon standing sadly in the corner. There's its filter laying on the ground there and here's the tank. It did start leaking though. Um, after I cleaned the sand and put it in, um, the overflow method is horrible. So what I did was a similar overflow method. I would take a hose and there would be about this much sand in here so like 
three inches full of sand, take a hose and just pressurize it so that some sand would fly over the top. And finally the sand cleaned off. Like I actually might recommend you going to an aquarium store and buying, the, buying it for a dollar a pound. Because after cleaning it you're going to lose definitely about maybe like four pounds for sure out of that 50 pound pack. And it's going to go into your soil and it gets a little bit messy and annoying. But for if you're on a budget and you don't mind water usage, like I ended up probably using about two to three hundred gallons of water cleaning it off. Um, so that just cost me about what, like two to three dollars of water. So it's it might be better just to buy cleaned off sand and just rinse it off once rather than spend a whole day trying to clean it off. But honestly, with the T5 6500K bulbs, this tank, like this white sand, will look awesome like you have to believe me I cannot wait to actually set it up but today we're gonna be getting silicon sealing it up from the inside just adding a new layer of silicon onto the old one the old one is black and it looks nice because the plastic bottom frame also plastic here uh, is also black and then they have black on the sides but if we just put another not too thick layer of silicon on the sides you can see that I still have some grains of sand sitting on here um, yeah, but if we just put another layer of sand on the sides, then it should be also good to go. Okay guys, so the first image that you see here, I'm just going to show these to you really quick, is what the color of the water was. It was extremely murky, and that was after I cleaned the sand using the overflow method with the bucket. But here, you can see the second image here, and that's how clear the water was when I pressurized, I cleaned it with pressure using a hose, and I would just dump the water out so I would basically pressurize it so much that sand would start lifting up and flying all over the aquarium and then as it would do that I would tip the water over and it's like overflow but much more powerful after doing that for about 20 times and spending about I'd say between 100 and 200 gallons of water for sure the sand was clean and that's how clean it looked after I poured in a ton of water in it outside pressurized so results are results basically will vary with this process Alright guys, that's it for this video. Look forward to the future video of me just bleaching out this tank and destroying all the algae with the water change this time. The last bleach was experimental. It did clean off the plants, but the algae came right on back to the plants because I did not do a water change, which was really stupid. But still, it's been running for about three to four weeks now, over a month actually. And uh, nitrates are at 20 right now. They were at 10 when I started it, so that's very good. Not increasing too much because these plants are growing like crazy and helping me destroy them. With that one alone uh, glass catfish and three mystery snails. My local fish store did not get the shipment of blue velvet shrimp. And I'm actually happy that they did not get it yet. They get random shipments each week. It's just a weird contract they have with their seller. And I'm happy they didn't get it yet because my KH is still at zero. I need to figure out a way to fix that. And KH basically determines the stability of your pH. If the KH is too low, that means, it, like literally at zero, that means your pH could go from six to eight overnight and it will kill your shrimp with um, that kind of rapid change. But I will do research, I will figure it out, and I will keep you guys posted. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.